Hello everyone and welcome to the Daily Spotlight. I'm Cynthia Ndanyadu, I'm the Congress Committee Chair um, and uh, together with the POC and the Congress Committee we put together your prog programme. So today we're going to highlight a few of the sessions that are of interest to us personally. So our President Martin R Ranke Hello. and uh, Justo Castaño, we're going to discuss uh, our favourite highlights um, for the next couple of days. So should we uh, start with Martin? Thank you, Cynthia. So um, I think that this program, it's very hard to select something in this very rich program, but I selected for you um, two uh, of our awards recipients. One is uh, Maria Luisa Brandi, and she's talking about the ever, I think the, if I remember correctly, the title is something about the never ending story of the parathyroid saga. And the talk is on tomorrow morning, Monday morning. It, she has received the European Hormone Lecture. She has been working all her life in parathyroid function, osteoporosis, and so on. She's professor of uh, endocrinology at the University of Florence in Italy. And uh, so that will be a fascinating talk, which I would like to highlight. Should I go on? Yeah, that, that sounds fantastic, actually. So um, I think that you, you, you will all at home um, be able to look at the online program to identify where the talks are. And if something that we talk about has already happened, uh, you can get it on the on demand. <laughs> so by the time you see this, you know, some things might have happened. Yeah, I'm old. I, 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 I agree. And sometimes I forget that what time of the day we have. Yes. And if I'm talking about something which already happened, that would be great. Fantastic. And, and Gusto? Well, I think that uh, we have a fantastic program uh, because uh, it's a uh, very varied. We have uh, from very molecular things to clinical uh, stuff that is very interesting and uh, in a very good learning point for uh, translational researchers. I particularly like, uh, for example, the plenary that will be delivered by the great uh, Marta Corbonitz, uh, professor of endocrinology in London, and uh, she will tell us the story of uh, pituitary pathogenesis from a molecular point of view until a clinical point of view. And uh, in relation to that, we have uh, several sessions where neuroendocrinology is seen uh, in a different view, in a different perspective, more like a, a novel tool to understand the working of the normal cell, but also how to combat tumors and cancer that are related to, for example, GHRH or to dopamine. So we will see how the receptors work from the inside, how they shake, and this is a completely, I would say, different manner of approaching neuroendocrinology. And this enriches also the clinical and translational side of uh, our science. Absolutely. So, so I think that ties in very well to the basic um, content that we have in the program. And, and something to look out for are the meet the expert basic sessions and the new scientific approaches. Um, so not only tools. For, for, you know, for everybody's research, but basic concepts in molecular biology on how cells are functioning under a normal environment in homeostasis and how we extract information from that that will help us combat disease when things go wrong. Um, for example, we have um, regulation of receptors in, in, in the regulation of fertility and meet the expert basic. Um, we have uh, multi-ohm approaches, so you know the, the new um, techniques where you have single cell RNA sequencing, attack sequencing to look at the chromatin, to look at, to look at gene expression. So all of these multi-ohm approaches are going to be showcased today actually at 12 o'clock with the new scientific approaches. The use of organoids and using, you know, you know all about organoids I assume. Yes. So organoids being um, like mini organs that grow from individual cells or little groups of cells. And these can be used for testing, so endocrine disrupting uh, chemicals, uh, testing drugs, etc. can be highlighted from normal and diseased tissue. So all together, I think this content is going to appeal not only to the basic scientists, but to the clinical audience for wanting to, to look a little bit more into how, how the research is being carried out. So what is going to be on the program today? So today we've got um, the Multiome at uh, 12 o'clock with Igor Adameko. Um, and I, I think we have uh, organoids tomorrow. 
and we have um, receptors the regulation of fertility the following day. Great. So, so Sounds we, oh. good. Okay. Wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. And on Tuesday we have a session that I would like also to highlight that uh, it's becoming extremely important. It's uh, how we manage to get and extract information from uh, the genomics, the transcriptomics, uh, to translate that into clinical science. And uh, we have three different speakers, Attila so Patox, Guillaume yes. Massieu, and uh, a, a Symposium, yes. And, uh, and we have a Mathieu Fall, and they will speak about different type of uh, tumors and how to extract the information from there, how to uh, make value out of it. Because uh, we are in the era of information. We are overflowing with information. How to extract knowledge from there. And uh, this requires tools and new approaches, uh, but I'm certain that we will have very good news in there, and uh, I look forward to, to, to see it. This because is on Tuesday. Big data, you know, is, yes. is, is big. Um, so it's, it's really important that the experiments don't stop with the generation of the data, yes. right? That's where the experiments actually start. Exactly. So we, we, we extract the information, yeah. right? And we need this to only costs it. money to make the to, yeah yeah, to yeah. Get the Any, anybody but with money can do it right. Yeah. But, but then, then it starts really exactly. Yeah. So so I think that would be a, a really nice uh, nice up talks and, and going forward to to inspire people also to think about their own research and and collaborations and how they can move forward with big data. And we have we have another one actually that we forgot to mention, which is the circulating DNA yes. in tumor patients. Um, yeah. Yes. So um, I think that will be a very exciting session as well. Okay. Um, so yeah, so, so lots, of, lots of exciting things I to look forward to. Uh, uh, um, not, um, wouldn't say that it is only basic, it's rather translational. But we have another award winner, which is George Cruzos, uh, who is receiving the Transatlantic Alliance Award. The Transatlantic Alliance Award is the award between, shared between the Endocrine Society and the European Society of Endocrinology. And we are awarding it a second time now. So first recipient was somebody from the pituitary field, Shlomo Melmet, uh, last year. Um, and this year it will be George Cruzos um, from Greece and formerly from the NIH. Um, he is a mentor of uh, hundreds of uh, endocrinologists uh, from the pediatric and adult uh, scenery including myself, <laughs> and so it's, it will be a great honor. He's giving a talk about HPA access stress, endocrine implications, and uh, uh, implications in health and disease. This will be tomorrow at 12 o'clock. And just to mention, if you're going to Endo 2023, you can listen again to his talk. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> because that's the uh, responsibility of the recipients. Uh, to give two talks. They give the same talk in yes. both society meetings. Yes. So that's, that's, that's yeah. wonderful, actually. Yeah. And I will listen to it uh, <laughs> at the end un of the un game. Unless they say something that the audience doesn't really like <laughs> and it falls flat. So the jokes maybe have to come out for the second <laughs> the one. <laughs> has the, se the jokes have to be different and have to be better. <laughs> the exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's, it sounds like uh, we've covered a, a very, very rich program. There's a lot of choice, I think. Yeah. Um, but have you mentioned already the UN? Institute? No, I haven't. So ah. that's what I was going to do. Okay. So, so as you will, most of you, if not all, know that we have the European Women in Endocrinology Initiative that launched last year in Milan. Um, and tonight we're having the UN reception. So it might be a bit too late for, for you watching um, to, to join the UN reception. It's at 5.30. Everyone's welcome, women and men. Um, we, we need the support of the community. Um, and we wanted to just update you on uh, the, new, the, the initiatives that have been ongoing throughout the year and our future plans. And it's a great opportunity to just get together and network. Um, so please join us for you in. Yeah, and but, but then we have to mention that we um, could yesterday announce the first female president-elect yeah. and president, future president of the society in 2025, Liebke Alt. Yeah. She also was founder she of the UWIN group. Of UN. Yeah. Yeah. Very rapid uh, success, I would say. Yeah. You, um, maybe we should already stop the UN initiative because you have achieved your goal. <laughs> well, well we, 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 ha we have heard a lot of men saying, why don't we have an initiative? <laughs> well, you can, you can 
found one as well. <laughs> it's not. It's not. And a actually, Bibke was the founder also of uh, another very thrilling initiative that is ICE. Uh, our young people. Yeah. A third of the society is uh, young people, and they are very active, not just uh, in their own symposium, but also in all of our activities. So I recommend to go to the oral communications, to the rapid communications. This is full of young people that is doing very good science. So the future of the society is uh, female, is young, and is unsure. Fantastic. Yeah, well, that's true. The statistics of our society, 35% are in training or consider themselves yeah. to be um, young yeah. endocrinologists. So uh, that is an amazing number because this is uh, will be a future driving force of our society, so it's yeah. really great. Yeah. And we are doing a lot for the young scientists. Not only we have the ICE, but we have a lot of grants. We, we have, have the Young Investigator Awards, yes. Yes. 12 uh, young investigators oh, every okay. year. Okay. They um, have the so uh, ICE magazine, uh, yeah. the, the sister journal of uh, the endocrine news. Uh, and uh, they're doing great. So, and, and this year we have quite a lot of um, eyes uh, representative chairing as well yes. uh, sessions. So we had a call out for anyone who wanted to uh, to become a chair. So we'll try and keep that up also in future conferences and have as much involvement as possible. Yes. So um, maybe this is a good place to to stop um, because I think we've given everybody so much to to think about for for the next couple of days of the program. Um, so thank you very much for joining our conversation today. Thank you.